We're going to continue this week what I started last week, a series uh, discussing our relationship with money. So we're talking about our relationship with money and specifically how does our relationship that we have with money impact our relationship with God. I asked last week, are there any ways money has its hold on you, preventing you from the experience of fully surrendering and trusting God? Uh, we're going to take a look every week at this text. This whole series is kind of inspired by this teaching of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6. And so let's go ahead and read that together this morning. If you can switch that slide for me, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Matthew six nineteen to 24, Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust to destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't destroy and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the, hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, but instead store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. There's a, a deep contrast made here by Jesus. Treasures on earth and treasures in heaven. He says, you cannot serve both God and money. Jesus separates these two things. You cannot let money be your master and also have God be your master. And I think there's a reason that Jesus talked about money more than he talked about heaven and hell combined. And it's not because he loves money or because money's special. It's actually because he knows how tight a grasp that money has on our hearts. It did in the first century and it does today. As humans, money just takes a, a tight grasp of our hearts, and he wants all of our hearts. So last week we looked at greed and the, the impact that greed has on our relationship with money and therefore preventing deeper relationship with God. We, we talked about the, the importance of giving up greed for contentment, true contentment. See, we typically, we, our greed leads us to having more for ourselves, thinking that will give us contentment. And there's, I don't need to even speak of the many examples in which that's not truly the case, where seeking more, especially wealth in this world, isn't going to lead to contentment. But seeking more for God does. It leads us to true contentment. Giving up the pursuit of more for me for the pursuit of more for God. Giving up earthly riches for true eternal riches. Greed isn't simply hoarding riches. Greed in scripture and what Jesus warned us of in greed is actually simply the desire for more and the pursuit of more, specifically in relation to me. I want more for me. And so when we think of our money, do we think of me or do we think of God? We need to turn our hunger for having and storing up more for ourselves into a hunger to have more and store up more for God. True riches, eternal riches that can't be surpassed are found in desiring more, accomplishing more, and storing more for God. When our hunger and desire for more shifts from me to God, it will transform our perspective and pursuit of contentment. It will rid, rid our hearts of greed and lead us toward the treasure in heaven Jesus speaks of in Matthew 6. And so again, I ask you this morning, is, are, are, is our heart or is your heart on earth or is your heart in heaven? We're going to be challenged by this this morning. So I move on from greed and the, the grasp that greed has on our hearts, this desire for more to stress, to worry. Anyone here have any experience with stress or worry? Everyone conquered that battle that, that we have in life? Uh, it's become a, a pretty big norm in society, isn't it? It's almost a passageway into adulthood is this kind of, yes, I got this stress and worry in my life, therefore now I'm, I have important things in my life. There are a lot of words of wisdom about stress, and so I'm going to share some of the worldly, worldly words of wisdom it's easy when you, you find yourself overwhelmed by stress to start looking for some support. I want to just share some of these statements, these phrases. Give your stress wings and let it fly away. Anyone find that helpful? If only you could, right? <laughs> Ten years from now, you'll laugh at what stresses you out today, so why not laugh now? That could be true. How about don't stress, do your best, forget the rest. At least it rhymes. <laughs> 
Do your best, forget the rest. It's not bad advice. Uh, it's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. That might be true. Does that help me to overcome my stress? What about this one? Stress. This one's clever. Stress. Someone trying to repair every situation solo. Also something that's probably true. This one might make you think a little bit more. Tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. Tension is who you think you should be, and relaxation is who you are. And then this is the best one of all. This is the one that truly is advice for many of us. Yeah. Stressed, spelled backwards, is actually dessert. Mm -hmm. I actually had to... Yeah, it's desserts. Anyway, uh, so we're going to talk about stress and the impact stress has on us today. And there's a reason I'm talking about this. It's because just like greed has its, its, its deeply seated in our hearts, stress and worry has become rampant today. And it's widely accepted as just being part of life, specifically and, and especially uh, stress when it comes to money. It's a serious problem today and it shouldn't be ignored. Uh, there are a number of emotional and physical disorders linked to stress. I'm going to read some of these. Depression, anxiety, heart attacks, strokes, gastrointestinal distress, obesity, hypertension, just to name a few. High levels of stress can wreak havoc on the mind and the body. Uh, it can lead to frequent headaches, sleep disturbance, back and or neck pain, feeling lightheaded, faint or dizzy, sweaty palms or feet, difficulty swallowing, frequent illness, irritability, gastrointestinal problems, excessive worry, rapid heart rate, muscle tension, feeling overwhelmed, having difficulty quieting the mind, poor concentration, forgetfulness. I'll just stop there because that's probably enough. Yeah. Somehow, somehow it's accepted as just part of life. This is just part of life. We stress. And I'll note before I continue that I'm not specifically speaking here about anxiety. I think stress and anxiety are two different things. Stress actually impacts our anxiety. Um, and many people do, do struggle with things like anxiety disorder. But what I'm talking about this morning is stress or worry. What, what, what causes that anxiety or what kind of fuels it within us? What are these things that consume our minds that we're constantly thinking about? I think the number one thing is money. I don't actually just think that. There's actual statistics that make it very clear that in today's world in North America, money is the number one cause of stress for people. In fact, 44% of people say the number one cause of stress in their life is uh, money. Uh, this is actually, it's increased significantly and just, it just in recent years. Money is more of a problem than either personal relationships or even work. The study found that 41% uh, say financial stress impacts their relationship with their spouse and 45% say it leads them to miss out on social events. More than a quarter of respondents also reported feeling depressed on a monthly basis because of their financial situation. There's a reason that money, I think there's a reason why this is such a big deal and it causes so much stress in our life and it's because money touches everything. Money actually impacts everything from our housing to food to transportation and especially for, the, for, for many of us, the, our quality of life. Money impacts our quality of life. Feeling like you don't have enough can seep into every aspect of your existence and so almost every area of our life is impacted and you can see that from all these responses, and you probably recognize some of those in your own life, how this impacts, is impacts even all of our relationships, uh, how we just live day-to-day -day life. There's a reason it's a big deal and why money causes us so much stress. With all that being said, let's hear what Jesus has to say about this. You might be thinking, okay, yes, I know this is a big problem. Thanks for just heaping that on us, Peter. But let's hear what Jesus has to say about being stressed or worried about our finances, about money. We're going to continue in Luke chapter 12 today. So we looked at verses 13 to 21 last week. We're going to start in verse 22 this week, if you'll read with me. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. 
If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses of your, for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so Jesus says in regard to this, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not fret. And this word that he uses is, don't be, don't be troubled with cares about this. Uh, don't have your mind set on this. Don't be looking out for this. This isn't what you should be caring about or looking for. Specifically, Jesus is talking about living. So actually beyond money, not just money but also just living, having the sustenance of life. What we'll eat, our body, don't worry about your clothing or even having any clothes to wear. Don't set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, he says. These are the essentials of life, what we need to live. They're basic human needs. So if there's anything I think that's fair to worry about, it should be these things, right? If there's anything fair that we should be concerned about that should cause us stress and worry, it should be these basic essentials of life. And for a lot of people in the world, that is where they live. But Jesus says, do not worry. Do not let these things cause stress in your life. Why does Jesus say this? It's, is it not fair for us to allow these very simple basic human needs to cause us stress. I think the reason is very simple. I'm not going to expound expansively this morning on these examples he gives of how God cares for the birds or for the flowers and how we're much more valuable than that. What is Jesus saying through all that? I think it's pretty straightforward. What he's saying in this passage is trust God. Trust in God. This is the one thing Jesus is calling us to and he's saying, he's saying to trust in God. Do you trust God to provide for you? Is your life, are the basic, even, even the basic essentials of life, what are you depending on? What are you trusting in for the provision of those things? He's saying to trust in God. It might seem unfair or impossible, and you might think, I can't do that, but I want to be a little bit, a little bit blunt this morning if I can, if you're thinking, that's, that's a little unfair. Well, that's, that's really, you know, that's easy to say, but how do I actually do that? I'd argue the, no, the number one reason we might struggle to trust in God and avoid stress or worry when it comes just to these basic essentials, for some of us, I think that might be even a challenging thought, just to think about not actually worrying if we were to be in a place without those. But I think the biggest reason we struggle with that is because we're still trapped by worry about the unessentials of life the things that aren't the basics of life. We're not worrying about living. We're often worrying about a standard of living. This takes us back to last week, our desire for greed and for more. If we can't even get beyond our worry about needing more than we already have, when what we already have is more than enough, we will always struggle with fully trusting in God and avoiding stress in regard to the essentials of life. In other words, let's begin with the, uh, let's begin with the unessentials. We have to overcome the unessentials before we tackle the essentials. We have to transform our pursuit of more for me into a pursuit of more for God. And now on an even deeper level, we must transform trust in me, trust in myself, into trust in God for the essentials of life. Our trust is not in our money. Our trust is in our God. Our security is not found in the balance of our bank accounts. Our security is found in the promise of God's care. And can I just say this? I think that so often we are prevented from, from our own lack of trust in God and from our trust and security being found in our bank accounts, <laughs> in our ability to gather more and store up more for ourselves. Our security and trust is found in that so much that it stops us. So often God is leading us somewhere, wants to, he desires to bring us someplace, and it stops us. Jesus here is saying, do not let money stop you. Don't let money stop you. I, I shared earlier these, these sayings, these worldly sayings about stress. 
that might be a little bit helpful. I think Jesus has his own meme in this text, his own saying. Jesus isn't just declaring trust in God, don't trust in, these, in, in yourself. For the basics of life, Jesus gives us instruction. This is his helpful word of wisdom. If he had a meme from this text, it would be this, but seek first his kingdom. But seek first his kingdom. Don't stress, instead seek. What we're seeking determines what we worry about. What we desire most determines what causes us the most stress. If we're trusting, if we have trust and we know God will care, God will provide, this is where the very basics of life no longer cause this worry within us. In fact, very little can cause us worry. The question raised by Jesus then is this, what are you seeking? What do you desire most? What is guiding your heart and your life? What is most essential right now to your heart and life? What is it you are living for, working for, going through the motions each day for? What motivates you to succeed in business, in work, at home, in your marriage? What's motivating you? Is it you? Is it the benefit that it brings you? Is it the kingdom you're working to build for yourself here on earth? Or is it the kingdom of God? Is it treasure in heaven that awaits all those who trust in the name of Jesus and whose lives shift to seeking all things for the glory of God? If we're ever to exceed at surviving the stress in our life, especially in regards to money, there's a clear path forward given by Jesus. It's not an easy one. It's a clear one. It's a path that will lead to clarity about your life, peace in the midst of life struggles, and power to overcome the crushing blow that stress so often hands us. Seek first the kingdom of God. I'll repeat it. Seek first the kingdom of God. That might not sound unusual to you. It might sound okay. That makes sense. I, I've heard that before. But, but let that please soak into your heart this morning. Uh, if you can at this moment, just think about your life. Think about all the things that occupy your time, uh, that especially ocup occupy your bank account, your worries, your concerns, the things that uh, fill up your prayer life, the things that you're about to go out and do this week. Think about all the things you just did this past week. Jesus says to seek first the kingdom of God. This is the path towards a stress-free life, a worry-free life, towards the impossible where we don't stress out about money anymore. Further than that, we don't stress out about the basics of life. We are carefree <laughs> because we are in the hands of our loving Father. We have to live with an eternal mindset as followers of Jesus Christ. We are headed towards eternity. <laughs> we have to live with this eternal mindset. We have to spend with this eternal mindset. Jesus says to sell your possessions and give to the poor. It's easy to read that and think he doesn't really mean to do that. He means something else. And I'm not going to teach that this morning. I want to make sure you heard that. I'm not actually addressing everything in this text, but I want to make sure we heard this. This is what it looks like. Man, Jesus challenges us. When was the last time that we sold something in order to give to someone who else who's in need? Hmm. We don't have any care in the world. We don't depend upon what we have for our security. We depend on God. And so when somebody needs something, we give it. How often have we thought recently about our home in heaven? And how often do we think or have we been thinking about our home here on earth? This isn't an easy thing. I know this is a challenging thing that I'm sharing with you, that Jesus challenges us with here this morning. It's not easy, but there's a simplicity that, to this, you guys. So often we just succumb to the, the standard that's set before us or all around us. And what's, what's most widely accepted, it's assumed. And we just think, okay, it's okay. My life is completely consumed with stress and worry. And we have an attitude, especially in regards to our money, where we hold on to this. Even if we're generous, I'm going to hold on to enough. 
I can't give away this much. How often when we're thinking about either giving to the poor, giving to the church, or just giving to anyone in our life where we see need and we just think, I can't, I don't have enough. What we're truly thinking is, (laughs) what we're truly thinking is, I need this for me. God calls us to fully trust in him and to seek his kingdom first. How many times has our ability or inability with money been the deciding factor when it comes to doing something for God. I want to just quickly share uh, a story with you, a couple of different stories in regards to this. In so many ways, I also want to say this. I'm, I'm one of the worst people to be up here. Maybe not one of the worst. There's some worse people than me, but I'm, I'm not a great example to be up here saying this to you. I'm not sharing this from some sort of expertise in this, uh, in this matter. I'm one of the most frugal people that I've ever met. I'm consumed with trying to be incredibly cheap in everything I do, save every dollar in everything I do. And so this is a very big challenge for me to think about my things, to think about money being this way. But there have been a few examples in my life where God has just crushed and smashed my, my security and my trust that I had in a bank account or in how much I had where God has said, and if you don't hear anything else this morning from this teaching of Jesus, I think this is really what he wants you to hear this morning, and it's this. Don't ever let money stop you. Money is nothing. God's kingdom is everything. And when God calls you to do something, when God calls you to be someone, he will provide. Trust in him. Don't ever let money stop you. And there have been just a few times in my life where I've been able to do this, where this wall has come up and it's been money and it's been the reality that I don't have money. When Chelsea and I were in our early 20s, uh, before we were even in ministry, actually before I even thought ministry could ever be a possibility for someone like me, we went on a, a mission trip one summer to a northern, a northern European country called Estonia and, and it was an absolutely incredible experience. Uh, it inspired me to, to actually go into ministry, become a pastor and to serve God in this way, to be a light for him. I want to share the gospel for the rest of my life. It was so inspiring. But I soon settled in afterwards into real life. I need money. I need a career. I need a job. But God kept pulling at our, our, our hearts. And over the next year, there, there was an opportunity uh, to go on another mission trip, to, to go to the same place. In fact, there's actually a team that was scheduled to go back to the same little church that we had been in. And then some people had to drop out. And this was kind of last minute, within months of going. And this is back in the day where Chelsea and I lived off student loans and we, I think it was about $850 or something like that a month was our budget and it was all just money from the government. Uh, we didn't have jobs because we were both full-time students. Yes, people do get married sometimes in the olden days <laughs> when they don't have the money to do so. We were just so in love with each other, right Chelsea? <laughs> but we, we had nothing and, but this opportunity came up and man, we just knew for sure we need to go. This is for us. This, is all, this opportunity opened up because we need to go back. But we had no money to go. In fact, we had plans to go up to northern Canada and make as much money as we could that summer. And so we decided we would go up north and make as much money as we could. Man, things just kept destroying that plan <laughs> to the point where we finally knew, let's just go anyway. Chelsea got like a $600, what was it, six or $500 ticket for, for anyways, for, for speeding. I, I shouldn't even have brought that up, but for speeding past a, it was the very introduction of, you know, you can't, you have to slow down for police on the side of the highway, right? You know, we lived in the olden days where you didn't have to do that. But uh, it was right after that happened. So she gets this big ticket. I can't remember what else happened. We had car problems, but everything was going wrong and we had no money. And it just seemed impossible. But we decided to go ahead and go on this mission trip anyways. And, <laughs> and right before we left for this mission trip, the church that was up there in northern Canada where we were, we were about to go on a mission trip, and we had to go to school the next year, and we didn't have any money saved for it, but we just thought we need to still go and give up our summer uh, of making money. And this church took up a special offering for us very randomly without us knowing about it and I'm not still I'm still unsure why did you guys do this 
Uh, I don't know if someone caught wind. I don't think they had any idea of what financial situation we were in. But the money that we got from that church was, uh, was actually over, but just over every single dollar that we had lost and every dollar that we needed for the next year's school. And it was just incredible. Thousands of dollars were donated that Sunday morning for this young, young couple. God provided. And that has been a long, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons that I decided to, to go ahead and plant a church and be part of this. But uh, I've, I've often had to have people like Rick and our management team, I talked about this last week, kind of rein me back in where I start to think, we don't have the money for this. What should we do? We don't have the money for this. Thinking they're, man, man, these leaders are crazy. What are they even thinking? We can't do this. We don't have the money for this. But the attitude has always been, Let's do this. This is of God. This is where God's leading us. God will provide, and God always has provided. These are just a couple of very small examples. I know that some of you have examples of this. I hope this is leads you to thinking about your own life and your own path forward in life. Don't ever let money stop you. When you are considering whether to do something for God's kingdom, God says, seek first his kingdom and you will have all that you need. Discover true treasure in heaven that will never fail. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. For wherever your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Our treasure is no longer anything of this earth. It's no longer of this wor world or even of this life. Our treasure is in God's glory, not our own. Our treasure is in God's kingdom, not our own. Our treasure is in God's purpose, not our own. Our treasure is in heaven, not on earth. And when we get a glimpse or a taste of this treasure, our hearts begin to transform and fill with power. Worry fades, stress fades, calm comes, and joy comes. Paul said in Philippians 4, verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. May our habit of worry, our prison of worry when it comes to money, transform into a habit of prayer as we entrust all things to God. May our stress over the essentials of life, especially the non-essentials of life, be transformed into trust in God to provide for us. Let's go ahead and I'm going to close in prayer. And I'm going to give some silence during this prayer for you to pray. Let's just go to God and seek His Spirit in all of this. Lord, thank you. Uh, thank you for calling us to something different, to living a different way. Thank you for shaking us from, uh, from where we currently are and, and calling us to just more, more for you. Calling us away from more for ourselves. Lord, everyone here, just, we, we all have different struggles when it comes to money, and especially when it comes to our worry, our stress, our concern about money. Lord, please lead us, lead our faith to a point where we can fully trust in you, where all worries fade. God, there's things in, in many of our lives that we just haven't quite let go of. And Lord, I just pray those things that have come to mind or they've, they've kind of seeped into our hearts this morning, we become aware of them. It's something we're holding too tightly. We're trusting too much. And I, God, I pray you, you don't, don't let that fade away from our hearts and minds. Please lead us to a new and transformed faith and life living for you more fully trusting in you. Keep that, God, in, in front of us so that we can work on that. And God, that our, our pursuit of more for ourselves, our pursuit of, of trusting in a stored up bank account can turn into trusting in you and can turn us, turn us toward prayer. Thank you so much, God, <laughs> that you provide 
and that you call us to this kind of a relationship where we can just freely be in your be in your hands and in your arms. Through your son Jesus we pray. Amen. Have a good week.